Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I wanted to share with you a fall card. And this card could easily be done as a Thanksgiving card. It's actually Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. And so I wanted something that could kind of go both ways and be very easy to make. And so when I was thinking about my intention as I was working on this card was the idea of gratitude. What am I thankful for? What blessings have I been given this last year? I think it's important that we take time to think about what we're grateful for and going through that practice of gratitude because it can make a real difference in our lives and help us see all the little blessings that we have around us. And so for this card, I want to keep it quite simple. It's a very easy card to replicate and make multiples of. And I just wanted to show you how you could quickly put together a full card that's really effective and doesn't take a lot of time. So let's get started. So in this case, I'm just taking a uh, ledger and script stamp sets. I like this really fun, tight script here and I've added it to my stamp pad and I'm just going to add it onto my card. And I'm not covering the whole card with it. I'm just doing kind of the top and the bottom. And you're noticing that I'm doing more than one value. That's on purpose. I don't want this all to be the same strength and ink color. And I'm not even worried about being stamped perfectly. I actually want a little bit of imperfection in how I am doing this. And I just want to set that aside for a minute just to fully dry uh, before we move on to add the distressed crayons. While we're letting that other piece dry, in the meantime, I'm going to start adding a leaf image from that same Strength of the Season stamp collection onto this pattern paper. So this is a great way of just adding images and pattern onto one of your pieces of pattern paper. Different way of using it. Instead of it being just a paper on its own, it's one layer on a more mixed media type project. When I had actually demoed this, a lot of people were going, oh, you didn't create the background? I thought you had created all the background and done all this work. I'm like, no, all you have to do is use paper that you already own and just add images to it to make it look a little bit different, to add those extra layers. Anywhere you've, where you've maybe not had a really consistent stamped image, add another image over top and you'll never be able to tell that you maybe didn't have a perfect stamped image on your card. There's lots of ways you can cover things up. You don't need to look at something as being ruined. It's let's figure out a way to cover that up or to d maybe take away from maybe the thing that detracts from it. And I feel like that's often what we often do is we put so much focus on the perfect that we kind of prevented ourselves from having fun creating. So I'm just gonna set that aside to dry as well. So now that this is dry, we're gonna start adding some distressed crayon on it. And I do want to try to match this piece of paper here. So often when I'm doing cards like this, I look at some of the colors and go, what colors do I wanna pull out? And I go, well, there's a fun red there. There's these deep browns. We already have a fairly dark card, so I don't wanna necessarily go with the, the more hickory smoke or black in there as much I want to go a little bit lighter with this. So often what I do is I just start adding a little bit of the crayon onto the surface and this is where you will see the difference between using a rough watercolor paper over using something very smooth where you get a much cleaner stroke of color when you're using this on a smooth paper in this case you're getting a very rough feel to this. And that's why if you're looking for a smooth blend, you need to think about what type of paper you're using compared to having something a little bit rougher like this that maybe will blend a slightly different way. And so again, in this case, I'm taking my finger and you can see when I rub it, it doesn't really rub super well. Again, this is the difference between a really smooth paper and a really rough paper. And again, watercolor paper isn't really meant to be used dry. So there's maybe a few different ways you could do this. You could probably actually use just a baby wipe like this and use it to kind of blend the color. And that works, but I think what I like using more is a water brush. What I like about the water brush is you can have a bit more control over how your color spreads. 
The other thing too is you can also decide if you want to leave that on if you like the lightness of it or if you want to make it deeper or darker you can pull color on you can add additional color as well because now that this is wet if I wanted to add a bit more color I can I can just add that just right on top to deepen it and this really comes down to personal preference about how much water you want to add how deep a color you want or how light a color you want And if you feel like you have too much color, you can always go across it a couple times and then pull up on your, put it onto your baby wipe or your cloth and then go in and that's a way you can pick up color and remove it off the surface. And again, because this piece of paper is actually going to be on top of there, I put that into consideration when I am mixing. You don't have to mix all the way to the center because of that because you're not necessarily going to need to go all the way to the center. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily use as much color as I did. I just wanted to add a lot to show you kind of how you can blend it. But you can definitely go lighter or choose just what type of gradient you want with this. So once this is fully dry, you just want to try to add this on top and then we will look at kind of where we want to go next with this. So I accidentally got a smudge on here. So what I'm going to do, you can't notice it too much, but I'm going to add a sediment on top anyways. So it's going to cover it up. So I really love this saying, live fully in the season that you're in. And I like this saying, but I, what I want to do with it is actually add a corner rounder. That just changes the look of this on the card. Instead of having a lot of really strong lines, now you have a much softer line. And I think that just adds a little bit of variation. So before I add this, I would like to just add a little bit of ink around the edges. So I'm using some vintage photo. And I'm just inking the edges slightly. And if you feel like it's too harsh, you can always just add a little bit more ink on the edges. Just trying to soften those lines, make it look a little less just stark white. What I want to do it this way is because we have the strong lines here and because there's a little bit of division because of the two different patterns, that's a really great intersection. Not only does it follow the rule of thirds, but you run into a situation where you don't need to, it doesn't feel like it's floating. It feels like it's actually meant to be there because it's connected to both pieces of paper. So now I added this to a craft background and that way this gives us this really strong fall feel to this card. The intention was to use a few products I have on hand like ink and stamps and distress crayons, but the idea was to add coloring and color to these in a way that did not take long. It wasn't something to be agonized over, but something to be done really quickly. And I think the idea of not overthinking these cards, but just really enjoy the simplicity of a simple design that can add just so much to your creative practice and just finding that self-care in things like card making. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and that you maybe learned something new today or maybe learned a new way you can use materials you already have. Again, with many of my projects, this one can easily be adapted for art journal or scrapbooking page. I try to keep a little bit of versatility in the techniques that I show you. If you've enjoyed this video, if you'd like it, subscribe to my channel and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, you can always find written instructions and photos on my website, hopalongstudio.com. There I usually go into a little bit more about the intention for each of these projects as well. And there's a lot of information there on how to create a self-care habit in your own life. And I'm also a design team member for Well Whisper Design. So if you are interested in any of the Well Whisper Designs products, use DT Nadine at checkout. That will give you 10% off of your next order. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.